Hi, I received a Banana Pi R3 back in December of last year and I have been tinkering around with it a little bit. I would like to show you what my experiences were with it and what I think of the device so far. Let's have a look at it. All right, this is it. This is the device in the official casing together with eight antennas. I have taken some old TP-Link and I ordered some new ones as well. Here you can see the SD card slot, which is being used for an OpenWRT installation. The SIM card slot is not being used right now. You can plug in a SIM card and get connected to the cellular network. Over here there is a reset switch and a WPS switch. Let's open it up. I have not screwed the top ah, together. So here we go. Let's first have a look at the other side of the device. We have five Ethernet ports, one gigabit each. And over here we have two SFP ports. You cannot use SFP plus as this only supports up to 2.5 gigabit. Here is a USB 3 port and this is for the power connector. Over here there is a dip switch you can also access from the side as you can see here. Those can be used whether you would like to boot from SD card or internal flash. There is uh, internal flash and you also have an NVMe PCI Express slot on the bottom. You cannot see it right now. There are some other ports like for fans and stuff like that, but I would not like to go into detail about them right now. Over here, there you could plug in the um, 4G interface card, just in case you would like that to use with a SIM card. All right, let's put it back together, connect it to power, and let's have a look at what my performance benchmarks were and what else there is. First of all, I would like to say thanks to Judy for sending me over the device. What I was not successful with is the SFP ports. It's quite hard to get um, SFPs that can connect to fiber. Most of the SFP ports and like all of the network interface cards that can run up to 2.5 gigabit per second are all running over copper. I wanted to test them with fiber, but I was not able to. So what I actually did test is the Wi-Fi performance and the CPU performance of this device. But, but first, let's have a look of the specifications once again. We have some more headers over here, light indicators. There you can see that it has uh, internal flash as well. It came pre-installed with a custom OpenWRT version. It was OpenWRT version 21 and I wanted to test the most recent version 22. Over here you can see connectors uh, for serial connection. You need a fitting cable in order to connect to those. I also did not test the mini PCI Express slot. Never connected some kind of fans or anything like that. Here you can see the micro SD card slot and the SIM card slot. What I also tried was an M2 SSD. Sadly, you cannot install and boot from this device, but only use it as a mass storage. And here you can see there is additional flash space. I do not know why they put on so many different kinds of uh, storage devices. I don't see why would anybody would do that. If you have an idea, just put a comment in the section below. Just one word to 2.5G networking. It might actually be a good idea for you to upgrade to 2.5G. There are not so many switches available right now who do 2.5G, normal 2.5G network cards you can get, but all of them are copper. For me, it makes more sense to go to 10G, but of course it consumes more power and is more expensive. Regarding the Wi-Fi, I tested with a Lenovo laptop that is Wi-Fi 6 capable and I received between 6 and 900 megabits per second. Well, so it didn't even scratch the 1G, so it should deliver a bit more. I don't know, maybe I was doing something wrong, but uh, I wasn't able to crack the 1G with Wi-Fi. I also did some benchmarking regarding the CPU. And for that, I took a Decisor DC740, which has a more performant uh, AMD SoC. You can see that later. And I also tested with a, well, quite old, but still a very good device, an APU4 
from PC engines, one of my favorite devices. Resu I also submitted my results into the OpenWT database, so if you would like to have a look at those in comparison to other devices, you can also compare, but there you don't see those nice graphics, which I have here. And in all my graphics, you can see that the DC is always, of course, it's always the fastest device, but the Banana Pi R3 really de delivers really good numbers. Just take a look at those numbers. And was what was also quite important for me is what the power consumption of the device was. So as you can see, it ranged between four and like eight or nine watts. It might be a little bit higher when you, for example, use the 4G card as well. I did not test that one, but let's have a look at what it looks like when you run OpenWT on it. And I have been running it quite successfully for some time. I use it as a like silly access point right now. I'm not routing any traffic over it to the internet. I had been doing that for like two or three weeks and it w also worked really nice. One problem with using a snapshot version like I do is that installing packages uh, at one day won't work anymore because uh, kernel versions change. Right now I would not use it in a productive environment. I would wait until the final release of OpenWRT services that actually supports this device because right now only the snapshot version supports the Banana Pi R3. But other than that, I really have to say I like the device. It's really snappy. It delivers good performance. I have no complaints whatsoever. So for me, I think it's a g quite a good trade when you really would like to utilize 2.5G and like want to upgrade your Wi-Fi, you can get really good deals, uh, a casing, power supply, antenna cables with antenna, all together below 200 euros. And if you have some questions to me or some comments, just leave them and I will try to answer them. Thank you very much. Bye bye.